This is what is hopefully going to be a short video on cr calculating prediction intervals for an individual response. So first, recall that a confidence interval is used for the mean response of observations at a specific value of the predictor x. So confidence intervals are for, are for the mean or average response. So for example, we can think of our prediction equation as mu hat y, so our mean response or predicted mean response equals a plus bx. So x here is a specific value of interest. So in that case, mu hat would be our point estimate, and the confidence interval will be mu hat y equals t with new degrees of freedom. 1 minus alpha over 2 is our left tail probability to give us a positive t-score in that t-table. And our standard error would then be the square root of MSE times 1 over n plus x minus x bar squared over n minus 1 sx squared, where this x here is that value of interest. So for predicting at x, that comes down here and gets plugged in. So this is not a sum of squares or anything. We're just saying how far is the value that we're predicting at from the mean of our x's in our sample. So if we predict the mean response of x, or excuse me, if we predict the mean response at that average, the standard error then becomes the square root of MSE over n, which would be basically equivalent to s over the square root of n, which we've seen before is just the standard error of the sample mean. But we can also see that the farther away we, from x we get, so the bigger this difference becomes, So the farther away we predict, the bigger this x minus x bar squared term gets, the bigger the standard error gets, the wider the confidence interval becomes. So our standard error is not constant. It depends on where we predict. It depends on the value of x, the value of interest that we're predicting at. So here's some info. So this is our cricket chirp data. And this is that sample statistic information that we had in our class notes. So we have our estimated regression equation, our prediction equation, y hat equals negative 0 0.309 plus 0.2119x. We have the standard deviation of x is 6.707. We had a sample size of 15. We had an MSE of 0.9438 and x bar equals 80. And so we're going to use this to do a few examples. So I have that the same relationship that PE plus or minus uh, critical value times the standard error is true, or that that y hat equals a plus bx is true if we want to predict the response for a single individual. So that line doesn't discriminate. The line doesn't care if you're trying to predict a mean response or if you're trying to predict an individual response. It doesn't care. It doesn't know. So if you're trying to predict a single individual and not the average using the prediction equation for a specific value of x, you can do that using this prediction equation as well. So for example, you can use this and call it just y hat equals a plus bx. So here this would be our individual response. And this x here, this is our value of interest. So just as before, except for now we're saying instead of having a mean response at that particular x, we have an individual's response. So at x equals 80 degrees Fahrenheit, we would have y equals negative 0 0.309 plus 0.2119 times 80 degrees. And that would give us 16.643 chirps per second. And again, that would be the average number of chirps per second for all days that are 80 degrees. And that would also be just on a specific day that happens to be 80 degrees, our predicted number of chirps per second when it is 80 degrees on that one day. The line doesn't know, the line doesn't care. So this is both our predicted response for the average And this is also our individual predicted response 
for all 80 degree days and for a single 80 degree days because the line's going to give us the same prediction for an average and for an individual. So when we create an interval to estimate a single individual's response, we call that a prediction interval. If we're trying to create an interval to create uh, to estimate an average response, we'd call that a confidence interval. So let's go back. A confidence interval is used for the mean response. A prediction interval is to estimate a single individual's response. And again, that general form is the same. So for a prediction interval, we still have PE plus or minus C e, CV times SE. And our point estimate will be Y hat. Our critical value is still going to be a T. It's going to be T with new degrees of freedom. 1 minus alpha over 2 in the left tail. And the standard error is going to be pretty familiar too. It's going to be MSE times 1 plus 1 over N plus X minus X bar squared over N minus 1 SX squared. And so you might look at this and say, well, hey, that looks an awful lot like the standard error for a confidence interval, and it does. The difference is in this one. All right, so the confidence interval formula just is MSE times 1 over N plus this X minus X bar squared over N minus 1 SX squared. This one, this makes the prediction interval wider because remember, interval individuals are more variable than means. Right? So if we think back to chapter 7, remember that the population of individuals has a standard deviation of sigma. The sampling distribution of the sample mean has a standard error of sigma over square root of n. So individuals are more variable, they're less predictable, they're less stable. Same idea here, if we're trying to predict an individual with a confidence interval, we're trying to estimate an individual with a prediction interval rather, we're going to have a much wider interval because individuals are just more variable. They're less precise. If we wanted to create a confidence interval for the average number of chirps for all 85 degree days, using our form from before, we would have mu hat plus or minus t with 13 degrees of freedom and 0.975 left tail probability times the square root of MSE and because this is a confidence interval this would be 1 over N plus 80 minus X bar squared over N minus 1 times SX squared and then plugging in our mu hat well, that would be that 16.643, so same point estimate, plus or minus t, that'd be 2.16 from the table. The square root, well, our MSC is 0.9438 times 1 over 15. And here, because we're estimating at the mean, this x minus x bar, this is going to become 0 squared over and we'll just write this in for completion, 6.707 squared. So our confidence interval becomes 16.101 to 17.184 chirps per second. And those are my units because I'm just estimating my average response. If instead we want to come up with the prediction interval for a single 80 degree Fahrenheit day, because we're predicting for a single day, our prediction interval will be less precise, it's more variable. So we're going to have y hat plus or minus t with 13 degrees of freedom, 0.975. So this is the same point estimate, and this is the same critical value. So it's only the standard error that changes when we compare prediction interval versus a confidence interval. Square root of MSE 
times 1 plus 1 over n plus x minus x bar squared over n minus 1 times sx squared. And again, this term is going to go to 0 because 80 minus x bar equals 0. So we have 16.643 plus or minus 2.160 times the square root of our MSC is 0.9438 times 1 plus 1 over 15. So even though this term goes to 0, so even though we're predicting exactly at the mean of our x's, we still have this 1. So still have a bigger standard error. So our prediction interval will everywhere always be bigger or wider than our confidence interval. And that's, again, simply because we're estimating an individual response rather than an average response. So when I work this out, my prediction interval for a day when it's 80 degrees is 14.467, excuse me, 14.476, 18.810 chirps per second. And again, comparing this to the chirps per second to our confidence interval that we had on the previous page for that average number of chirps per second, same day, same point estimate, same critical value, the only difference being our standard error, we get a much wider prediction interval. So we'd say we have 90% confidence that the frequency of cricket chirps on a single day where it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit will be contained by the interval. 14.476 to 18.810 chirps per second. This is a very different interpretation than what we would have had before for the confidence interval where we're estimating the average number of chirps per second for all days when it is 80 degrees.